There are plenty of video game franchises that have been in the zeitgeist for decades, some extending all the way back to the medium's infancy. Naturally, they're all not end-to-end -end bangers, in fact almost all of them aren't, but there are those franchises that manage to hit the nail on the head pretty much every time, and those are the ones we're featuring here. Running the gamut of genres including RPGs, strategy games, platformers, shooters, and action adventures, these are the franchises spanning decades that manage to define video games over multiple console generations and technological advancements. I'm Jess from More Culture, and here are the 10 longest running video game franchises with the most quality. Number 10, Final Fantasy. As will be the case with many of these entries, I can pretty much just say the title, you guys will go, yep, that makes sense, and then it seems like we could move along, but Final Fantasy deserves better, so let's dig in. In what is probably the JRPG to rule all JRPGs, a category brimming with fantastic series, Final Fantasy offers up enormously lore-rich worlds, starring a cast of interesting characters who most often find themselves wrapped up in consistently high-stakes conflicts. Created by Hironobu Sakaguchi back in 1987, the franchise has turned into a video game monolith that now encompasses a wide variety of different genres, as well as films, comics, and books. With a healthy handful of games that easily slide into most gamers' greatest of all time list and some of the most iconic protagonists in video games, Square Enix proves the deep quality of the franchise with every new iteration and entry. Given the stunning scores, especially from Nobuo Uematsu, rich worlds, fascinating stories, and gorgeous cinematic moments that can be found in Final Fantasy games, not to mention the unique, consistently compelling combat, the franchise is often hailed by other developers as a significant inspiration for their work. It's also frequently celebrated for pioneering stories that deliver emotional weight and proving that this is actually something that people wanted from the medium. That's my really fancy way of saying they made people cry and we liked it. Number 9. The Sims whether The Sims is your thing or not, the life simulation giant is a video game icon and has been since the first game came out in 2000, after which it sold almost 200 million copies. Has EA nickel and dimed its players beyond belief? Absolutely. And has every subsequent base game had even more DLC downloadables and add-on packs than the one before it? Totally. But there is something to be said for the absolute hallmark of the industry that is The Sims and its unique ability to attract casual players. While we can't forget the cancelled 2007 film based on the game, which is deeply confusing since the game is just based on real life, almost every game in the franchise has been critically acclaimed. The Sims is a cult phenomenon enticing its players with the worlds they can create, the challenges they set themselves, the joy of the digital simulation playground, the discoveries they can make, and the various ways they can kill their tiny Sims. Which, by the way, have never been as extensive as they are in The Sims 4, when you can, in fact, die by being swallowed up in a Murphy bed. Perhaps one of the greatest things the game offers is a thriving community of creators who share homes, families, mods, items, and just about anything you can imagine. It's really difficult to think of a franchise that offers up more emergent gameplay experiences than this one. Whether you like the creativity side, the role playing, or the challenges where you try to do things like have a hundred babies or live totally off the grid, there's a mind boggling number of ways to play, so it's little wonder the franchise has persevered for as long as it has with no end in sight. Number 8. The Legend of Zelda with its roots in pure adventure and iconic protagonist Link, The Legend of Zelda is perhaps the quintessential hero story. Now, The Legend of Zelda first released in 1986 to incredibly positive reviews. Almost four full decades later, in 2023, Legend of Zelda Tears of the Kingdom came out with the same producer, the same protagonist, and a lot of the same themes to equally incredible reviews. Masterminded by Shigeru Miyamoto and Takashi Tezuka, The Legend of Zelda has maintained its status as a flagship blockbuster title on every Nintendo console. The grand adventures, the evolution of iconic characters like Link, Zelda, and Ganon, the progression from wide-eyed courageous novice to a well-equipped heroic powerhouse, and the freedom with which Nintendo embraces and innovates with new gameplay mechanics make each new entry in the franchise an almost certainly anticipated slam dunk. The gameplay style, worlds, and stories may change from entry to entry, but the franchise maintains its themes as well as its preference of being a dungeon delving RPG adventure over one that's bogged down by numbers. And this is why its charm remains alive and well. Number seven, Mario. 
It's impossible for us to talk about Zelda as a flagship system seller for Nintendo without immediately following up with the franchise that not only predates it, but also happens to be the most commercially successful franchise of all time, selling approximately 830 million units. If you haven't guessed it yet, well, you really should have because I said the name all the way up the top of the entry, but if you have me second screened and you weren't paying attention, then let me reveal it. It's a him, Mario. Mario may have begun his life as the, now that we've thought about it, fairly controversial figure of Jumpman who quickly turned the tables on his nemesis Donkey Kong in his 1981 debut by spending the next few games locking him up in a cage, but thanks to our old friend iconic video game designer Shigeru Miyamoto not being able to secure the licensing rights to use Popeye in his new video game, the Italian plumber was born. The mythos, soundbites, mustache, hat, and gigantic piercing blue eyes of Mario really do precede him, but the only thing is popular as the character himself is the stunning tight platforming gameplay mechanics he's so often shipped with. From Mario Kart to Super Mario Brothers, Mario Party, the sports games, the puzzle games, the RPGs, and everything else I'm probably forgetting right now, there's basically something for everybody here, and that's not even including the offshoots and side characters who got their own games. While we're spotlighting plenty of games on this list that have dominated and defined a single genre, Mario's ability to earn gamers love in a way that transcends genre, age, and is still rolling out 10 out of 10 games over 40 years into its industry debut is nothing short of extraordinary. It's the franchise that keeps on giving and in many ways has really defined gaming as a whole. Number 6. Street Fighter While Super Smash Bros. is certainly a fighting game that has generated a lot of love, we'd be remiss not to include a true classic of the genre that kicked off with Capcom's Street Fighter, hitting arcades in 1987. Created by Takashi Nishiyama and Hiroshi Matsumoto, Street Fighter cast you in the role of Ryu, and your friend, assuming you've brought one or rustled one up in the arcade, in the shoes of his blonde rival Ken, not the Ryan Gosling one. It was when Street Fighter 2 came out in 1991 that it was fully established Capcom had absolutely overhauled the genre and made a game that would define it for years to come. The dozens of Street Fighter games that arrived in the decades after cemented the quality of the series with its numerous iconic characters, all with their own personalities, fighting styles and quirks, as well as some of the most enviable mechanics in the genre that competing studios have tried to emulate ever since. Players particularly gravitated to the gameplay elements which demand such a level of mastery that the franchise easily sweeps across the competitive scene. Or you can just be the best one in your friend group and kick all their asses. Either way, the franchise has since extended far outside of the gaming medium, but it's the core series in which it really thrives, and the slam dunk of a title that was 2023 Street Fighter 6 is a perfect example. Whether you prefer your Street Fighter in an arcade cabinet, a home console, or that weirdly sexy episode of Black Mirror, it's not surprising to see why this is Capcom's best-selling franchise of all time. Except for Resident Evil. And Monster Hunter. Man, Capcom are really nailing it with these franchises. Number 5. Civilization Stepping over to a genre so very far away that I don't think we can pop something in the middle of the Venn diagram, except for maybe the violence of Street Fighter and the violence of Civ's Gandhi on a bad day, we have the kingpin of strategy franchises. Despite being a more niche genre, Civ has stood the test of time for about as long as it takes to get through one of its campaigns. The first entry was released by Microprose and dude you've almost certainly heard of Sid Meier back in 1991, a year that was equally exciting because of the release of Street Fighter 2, but unfortunately both were overshadowed by my birth in March. One of the brilliant things about Civ that you can track with all these long-running high-quality franchises is you can take the core experience and supplant it into 2024, and it's just as good as we'd have hoped it was going to be. No loss of a grand heyday or evolution from crummy beginnings, just a bold evolution of an idea that's gone from strength to strength on the wave of every new generation of gaming. Civ is as it has always been, letting you play out a fantasy of historical civilization, tactically balancing your alliances, exploration and warfare, while micromanaging a laundry list of other objectives. Naturally, one man's task-riddled headache is another's brilliant 4X game, and if you're nodding along to the footage spanning the 20 plus years of the franchise so far, you're probably in the latter camp. The latest entry, Civ 6, was still releasing expansions up until March of 2023, seven years after the game launched. In just the standard edition, you had 18 civilizations to choose from. Critics across the board called it another slam dunk for the franchise due to its quality of life improvements and an incredible amount of of content. So basically the opposite of what we keep sledging games for these days when they come out cut down to the bone. Also Civ 7 is coming, we just don't know when, but it's coming. 
Personally, I would have liked to see Sid Meier's Pirates in this slot, but given it's not a franchise, it's just a single game that came out 15 times, it didn't really qualify. That is true though, it came out over 15 different separate years, so more than 15 times, not even counting consoles, but including the remakes. Isn't that wild? Maybe I should have included it. Number four, Grand Theft Auto. Looping back to the start again here, this entry could echo my Final Fantasy point, which is to say it's GTA and then move on. But let's run it back, run it over. With a car, steal a car, okay. Grand Theft Auto is in the upper echelon of the highest selling franchises of all time, ringing in at approximately 420 million units, which is a giant and funny number. Speaking of giant, funny, action-packed, surprisingly emotional blockbuster video games, Grand Theft Auto really does have it all. While its 1997 debut was a little light on opportunities to hunt down a Sasquatch or hoon around with your friends causing mayhem, it was an important foundation to lay for the franchise. That foundation, of course, being the bugged line of code that caused cop cars to be way too aggressive and the coders who sat back and said, that's hilarious, that should be a game. Money well spent then on the then trashed game Race and Chase, GTA was born in the most GTA way possible, where good intentions would get out of the way to usher in chaos, things that go boom, and more stoic arm to the teeth protagonists than you could shake a shoddy at. The reason that Grand Theft Auto is so special though is that it's bombastic, everything goes boom, explodey, larger than life world sits in the deft hands of Rockstar, who are known for their complex characters, incredible attention to detail, and rich world building. So you get all the madness and all the substance all at the same time. Everybody's happy, except for the NPCs you're running down. Number three, The Elder Scrolls. Summing up The Elder Scrolls feels like a feat that I have now taken on and don't know how to do. So let me try and squish this Lord of the Rings sized lore fest down into 45 to 60 seconds. So you can sit there nodding along knowingly and then we'll just keep trucking. Despite Bethesda's stubborn refusal to give us the next mainline entry, even though we've been good and deserve it, and some of us even finished our Starfield first, The Elder Scrolls is simply undeniable. Taking place throughout the continent of Tamriel, many Elder Scrolls entries share commonalities, like places, races, people, gear, and a common history. But the intent is largely to have you explore a brand new wedge of the continent each time you return. Skyrim, for instance, took place in Skyrim, Morrowind took place in Morrowind, and Oblivion took place in Cyrodiil. Ah, got you there. It did, however, also take place inside Oblivion Gates, which were the worst part of the game, but I digress. Where Final Fantasy and its rich lore and great gameplay mechanics sort of raised and then maintained the bar for JRPGs, it's arguable that the Elder Scrolls franchise did the same for WRPGs. And where others have sort of faltered or had gaps in quality in the RPG genre, Bethesda have taken really good care of their series. So far, and we hope they continue to. That's including the MMO, The Elder Scrolls Online, which, though launching to cautious optimism, is still releasing new content that dips into deep cuts in Tamriel's history. Though it should be said the single-player experience is where Elder Scrolls thrives, with its deeply memorable quests, gorgeous worlds, moorish RPG mechanics, and stories that will absolutely swallow you up. Number 2. Metroid now, I'm an enormous Elder Scrolls fan, but there's no such thing as Elder Scrolls Vania, which is to say, number one, Metroid is a phenomenon, and I'm sorry, I couldn't fit Castlevania on here, but I, we know it, it could be. If for some reason you hadn't heard it before, the genre Metroidvania was coined as a portmanteau combining Metroid and Castlevania. These games generally feature non-linear gated progression with core gameplay consisting of action and platforming. That sounds not super exciting, but again, let's remember this is the only game on this list whose title literally named a video game genre. Metroid arrived in 1987 from Nintendo and pioneered an entire handful of video game features and mechanics, rewarding exploration, placing trust in players' intelligence and skill, and even popularizing female characters through its protagonist, Samus. If you haven't had the pleasure, the easiest way I can drill it down into one sentence is that 22 years later, Metroid Prime Remastered came out, which souped up the 2002 classic and got tens pretty much across the board. An epic power fantasy that lets you exponentially grow in abilities, learn mastery of the game's systems, unveil its narrative secrets, take on the biggest of bads, and jam along to a stunning score beneath it all, Metroid more than earns its spot here and in the naming of a gaming genre. Number one, Metal Gear. 
Last but not least, yet another game that takes the core elements of stellar gameplay, compelling characters, incredible stories, and a very unique kind of charm, then mushed it all under the purview of one of gaming's greatest creators. Metal Gear should have always seemed like a sure thing. While iconic game designer Hideo Kojima always manages to raise a few eyebrows with the, um, unique way that he talks about video games, you gotta admit he always pulls it out the bag. With an imagination beyond what most of us would think within human limits, Kojima and Konami set sail on the good, melodramatic, bombastic, beautiful, and mad shit Metal Gear in 1987. After that, it would press the boundaries on plenty of assumptions about video games, namely that they couldn't tell strong, complex stories, design intriguing characters, or create a focus on stealth that remained mechanically interesting and flexible to player input choices. Beyond all this, Kojima proved himself a master of video game cinema that would inspire countless creators to come, and whose games lent themselves to some of the greatest soundtracks made for gaming. Eventually, we realized that loving his games meant we would be settling in for dozens of minutes of cutscenes, but early on, it was stunning. To be fair, later on, it was stunning too. We just started to make a joke out of it. Grossing over a billion dollars and dominating the realms of comics, toys, and one regrettable post-Kojima Exodus survival game that we'll pretend didn't come out, just about every game in the franchise has received incredible acclaim, and it's likely we won't see anything else like it ever again. I just realized I decided to end this list on the only franchise that's dead in the water, or probably should be dead in the water. So let's go back to laughing at Metal Gear Survive and end this one on a high.